Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we're dealing with a few issues that keep popping up age after age through reflection and examination of the scriptures. This time, what does the Bible say about economics? According to M.W., economics is a science concerned with the process or system by which goods and services are produced, sold, and bought. Many people believe that economics is, as a whole, artificial, but that's not entirely true. It arises, first and foremost, from death. People are able to die, and therefore need certain things in life to postpone their deaths, like food, shelter, and clothing. They attach a certain amount of value to these things, and are therefore willing to give up certain things that they have in order to gain them. This thing, called value, is a non-physical concept which represents the worth our possessions have, and all economics is based on that. When people decide that something, like gold for instance, should be used in an economy, that's because it's considered valuable to a lot of people, and therefore can be used to represent value in trades. Every money system in the world succeeds or fails on this basis. Does it carry sufficient value to the people using it? Those that are seen as less valuable will be traded for less, while more valuable money will be traded for more. These are the basics of economics. So, what does the Bible have to say about this? For also, when we were with you, this we declared to you, that if any man will not work, neither let him eat. 2 Thessalonians 3.10 Not that St. Paul wants people to starve, but that he wants them to be willing to work for the benefit of their fellow man, Paul himself worked as a tent maker while he was traveling, providing people with shelter that they needed to live or, in some cases, to do business of other kinds. By making tents, Paul added to the value that people had access to, and in turn was given money, a representation of value, which allowed him to buy food. However, when a person eats other people's food without working or paying for it, they're consuming the value of the food, but not adding value in any way thereby causing their supporters to lose value. Of course, some people fall on hard times and can't find work, and some people live in environments where the only available work requires skills and or experience that the average person doesn't have and can't obtain. Then there are people who can't do the available kinds of work because of physical injuries or moral objections. This verse isn't meant to condemn people like that, however. It doesn't say, if a man cannot work. It says, if he will not. This means he could be working, and has just decided not to. He that oppresseth the poor, to increase his own riches, shall himself give to one that is richer, and shall be in need. Proverbs 22.16 There's nothing wrong with doing good business and making money, but don't do it at the expense of the poor. There's always going to be someone richer who will take advantage of what you've done to increase their own wealth. There is a treasure to be desired, and oil in the dwelling of the just, and the foolish man shall spend it. Proverbs 21.20 Working hard and being prudent with your goods will help to improve your lot in life, and may even provide you with more than you need, but don't be wasteful. For which of you, having a mind to build a tower, doth not first sit down and reckon the charges that are necessary, whether he have wherewithal to build it, lest... After he hath laid the foundation, and is not able to finish it, all that see it begin to mock him, saying, This man began to build, and was not able to finish. Luke 14, 28-30 Don't start on projects if you don't have the resources to finish them. Yes, it's humiliating to fail, but there are even worse outcomes to this situation. Lots of people realize too late that they don't have the money to finish their project, and instead of stopping, they borrow it from a lender, putting themselves in debt, and ending up in an even worse situation. And when he had begun to take the account, one was brought to him that owed him ten thousand talents. And as he had not wherewithal to pay it, his lord commanded that he should be sold, and his wife and children, and all that he had, and payment to be made. Matthew 18, 24 to 25. It's not worth being in debt because you can lose your freedom that way, which is even worse than failure. It's possible to disappoint even there, however. The sinner shall borrow and not pay again, but the just shewed mercy and shall give. Psalm 37 or 36, 21. People who are foolish with money borrow from people and can't repay them. 
so they end up in debt, losing their freedom. People who act rightly are more likely to work hard to keep their heads above water and may even end up being the ones who are borrowed from. However, they're also more likely to be merciful and generous when someone does owe them money. These are all positive qualities. However, that giveth upon usury and that taketh an increase, shall such a one live? He shall not live. Seeing he hath done all these detestable things, he shall surely die. His blood shall be upon him. Ezekiel 18.13 In many places the Bible is quite clear that loaning money to people and charging them interest is a sinful act. It's an attempt to leech value off of the hard work of someone else just because you loan them something. So the biblical view of economics is simple enough. Work hard in a way that helps others. Don't be lazy, greedy, or wasteful. Know and accept your limits, and don't get yourself into debt, charge interest on loans, or mistreat the poor. Do the best you can to add value to the world, instead of depending on others to provide what you need all the time. The Bible also says you shouldn't put money first in your life, which is also good advice. It's not exactly on the topic of economics, but it is helpful to keep it in mind. Next, what does the Bible have to say about criminal justice? That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.